Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a brand new episode of 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent. We are very much moving through the ways and there aren't so many left. This is number 19 out of the 26. And this episode, insha'Allah ta'ala, is all about giving your children responsibility, taking them seriously, consulting them, and taking their advice when it's right. So those four sort of aspects. Take your children seriously. What do we mean by take your children seriously? Well, the problem is, is our children grow up. We still see them as tiny little children. We don't take any time to really listen to them or consult them. What I mean by this is take your children seriously. Take your children when they grow up and they're getting older and Allah gives them what He gives them from intellect and knowledge and maybe of things that you don't have. Don't always treat them like small, small children. Take them seriously. Give them responsibility. As Allah said, فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَدْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ The beginning of Surah An-Nisa. فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَدْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ With regard to the orphans, if you sense from them that Allah Azza wa Jal has given them maturity, maybe the best word for rushdan here is wisdom or maturity, فَدْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ Give them some of their wealth. And as Allah Azza wa Jal said earlier on in the ayah, وَبَتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ Give the orphans a test. I.e. give them a small amount of responsibility and increase that responsibility slowly until you see that Allah Azza wa Jal has given them wisdom and that Allah Azza wa Jal has given them maturity and then you can slowly increase the responsibility that you give them. Consult them. Take your children's advice, consult them in the matters. And when they give you good advice, learn to climb down from the ivory tower and take it. Learn to humble yourself, even though they're your children. And even though you're supposed to know so much better than them, learn also to take their advice when it's right, regardless of what their age is. So let's look at some of the dalil. We'd mentioned the evidence in Surah An-Nisa, wa batalul yatama test the orphans and this applies to the orphans and indeed it's a good methodology to use with your children in general test them for their responsibility and in another ayah in surat ali imran allah azza wa jal says fabima rahmatin min allahi linta lahum by a mercy of allah you were soft with them walau kunta fadhan and if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have fled from around you. فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ So overlook their mistakes and seek forgiveness for them and consult them in matters. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And consult them in matters. This is said to the Prophet ﷺ regarding the companions. Why would the Prophet ﷺ need to consult the companions when Allah Azza wa Jal gives him the wahi? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set this as a lesson for all of us. That as human beings we need to consult other people. And from the best of the people and the most sincere of people that you can consult about matters is to consult your children. 
because they sincerely want good for you. And then when you have made your decision, when you have al-azm, when you have made your decision, فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then trust in Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. So let's look at these various ayat in the light of what we said. Take your children seriously. Shawirhum. Consult them. Take them seriously. Especially when they get older. One of the worst examples of problems in parenting is when your kids get older, you still treat them like a little baby. And the problem is that you don't take them seriously. They stop talking to you. They stop consulting you. They stop sharing their hopes and fears with you. And they stop telling you when things are happening to them. And that can lead them to suffer, falling into the haram, other issues, problems at school, etc. They don't tell you because you don't take them seriously. Because they're still just a little baby, doesn't know right from wrong, doesn't know any difference, doesn't know anything about the world. The Prophet ﷺ took his companions seriously, including the very young companions. And I recommend that as a parent, if you have time, to read over the 40 hadith of Al-Imam and Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. Just pay attention to the number of hadith that are narrated by young children. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah and Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu an Al-Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhumah Young children that the Prophet sallallahu took so seriously that he entrusted them with the core of Islam. He entrusted them with the knowledge of Islam. He entrusted them with the knowledge of fundamental things that were needed by the whole Ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ entrusted his young companions with that. He took them very seriously. He took Abdullah ibn Abbas seriously. And An Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhumah seriously. And Ali two sons Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein radiallahu anhum ajma'in he took them seriously and so we must do so with our children we must take our children really seriously when they share something with us when they get a little bit older we give them a little bit of responsibility and we really want them to fulfill it we really teach them what it means to have an amana and then comes to this issue that brings us nicely to this issue of responsibility Responsibility is important. If you wait until your child's 15 or 16 to give them their first responsibility, then you're putting a huge burden on them. Because if they don't fulfill it, they might even be sinful. Whereas, look at the example of Anas. As a young child, he was used to having responsibility. When he became older, that responsibility was no problem for him to bear. We mentioned the hadith of Anas in an earlier episode. Regarding the event that happened to Anas radiallahu an with the amana the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave to him. So subhanallah, there is a lot of evidence in the seerah, in the sunnah, the examples of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the companions for giving young people responsibility. Now the idea is to gently ease them into it. وَبَتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ Test the orphans. I.e. test them with a little bit of money. Some of the scholars of tafsir said, you give them a small amount of money and see if they are sensible in spending it and keeping it. They don't lose it. If you give a two-year-old a dollar bill, might scribble on it, rip it up into pieces, post it through the letterbox and other similar things. If you give a five-year-old, they may keep it and be safe with it and they don't lose it. If they lose it, it's a dollar. It's not a big deal. But inshallah, you slowly test them, give them responsibility. Sometimes young children, you know, it's a little thing for young children. You know, bring me some water. Bring me a plate from the kitchen. And these young children love the responsibility. Go upstairs and bring my mobile phone and bring it downstairs. They love that responsibility. But it is an important lesson for them. You're teaching them to be responsible. You're teaching them to hold amana and to fulfill it. Inna Allah ya'murukum. And to addul amanati ila ahliha. Allah commands you to render trusts to those whom they are due. Allah commands you 
to give the amana to those people who the amana is due to. So a little two-year-old goes and brings you a phone, goes and brings you a plate from the kitchen, goes and brings you a glass, and they learn amana. They get a little bit older, you maybe involve people who are not from the family members. Go and give this to one of the neighbors, go and tell the man downstairs this or something along those lines. And so they go and they develop a little bit more responsibility according to what they're capable of. And if they mess up one time or two times, it doesn't matter. Just like Anas radiallahu an, when he went out and he played with the boys instead of delivering the message. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, did you go to that which I commanded you to go to? And I said, I'm on my way, inshallah. I'm going, O Messenger of Allah. So you don't come down too hard on them, especially when they're very young. And then you increase that responsibility. If you find it's too much for them, doesn't matter, there's no schedule. Turn it back a little bit, take a little bit longer, give them a little bit more responsibility over a longer period of time. فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَدَفْعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ And if you see from them wisdom and maturity, then in the case of the orphans, give the orphans the money that belongs to them and the money that you're keeping in trust for the orphans, give it to them. But you can apply this to your children. When you see some maturity from them, start to up the responsibility that you give them and show them how proud you are and how pleased you are that they are fulfilling that responsibility for you and how seriously you take responsibility, especially when it is towards other people rather than yourself. So inshallah, we'll explore some examples of this and some further discussion on this topic. Bi-ithnillahi ta'ala, after this short break, we'll be back very, very soon, inshallah. And until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shayhatin. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. I created the universe to appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran tomorrow at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, halal, halal. while others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are, you confused? are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam next on Peace TV. Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the shayhatin Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We are talking about four major points in a similar vein or in a similar topic with regard to good parenting, with regard to effective parenting, and that is to 
give your children responsibility, to take your children seriously. So now we come, after we've talked about responsibility, to consulting your children, especially when your children get older. You know, when we consult people, consulting others and giving each other beneficial advice is from the fundamentals of being a Muslim. Because Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ By time, indeed, mankind is in a state of loss, except those who believe and do good deeds and advise one another to the truth and advise one another to be patient. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned twice tawasi, mutual advice. The problem with mutual advice is finding a sincere advisor. It's pretty tough to find people who are sincere. Sometimes even your own siblings are not sincere. Sometimes even your own relatives are not sincere to you when it comes to these issues. So subhanAllah, if this is the case, and your own relatives are sometimes not sincere, and sometimes your friends are maybe not sincere around you for those issues, then Allahumma sta'an, we are much in need of people to be sincere with us, insha'Allah. We're much in need with, of people who can be sincere towards us. And we have a group of people, and they are our children. So as soon as they reach that level, and indeed this is part of giving responsibility to them, is consult them. You know, when they're very little, you might consult them. Should we go to this shop or this shop? Should we go to this park or that park? It's a minor thing. But they love the feeling of responsibility. They love feeling and being told and being given a feeling that mom and dad trust them, that mom and dad want to give them responsibility. That's what they love to have. And then after that, you can start to consult them in more serious things. Of course, you're not going to consult a five-year-old on a serious matter or a six-year-old. By the time they're eight, nine, ten years old, you can start to really consult them. What do you think about this? Even if they don't give you a sensible answer, just take that as part of the test. Take that as part of the responsibility. Say, I don't think that answer makes a lot of sense to me. So no problem, inshaAllah ta'ala. Okay, after that, what do you do? When you feel that they're starting to give you more sensible answers, so then you need to up and also increase the amount that you're giving to them. And the amount of the kinds of questions, the kind of advice that you're giving to them, you need to seek that as well, inshaAllah ta'ala, from them. So you start giving them more responsibility. You start asking them about more serious things. And by the time they're teenagers, really, you should have that kind of bond and relationship where you feel completely positive about talking to your children, consulting with your children. And one of the best ways I've seen this done as a practical example are family meetings or family gatherings. Just like a company would get together to have a meeting with the directors and decide some things, that you get together as a family and you have a time in the week, an afternoon when you're all off or something like that, where you gather together and deal with family business. That doesn't mean you're giving up control of your life and your matters to your children. But it does mean that your children feel like they're a part of the family and they feel like they are making decisions and helping to make them. So you have a family meeting. You have, okay, what's the first option on the agenda? The first thing is, okay, what are we going to do about this particular issue? If it's appropriate to talk to your children about it, you have to be sensible about which things are appropriate and which things aren't. But certainly as they get older, having a family meeting, gathering people together to have a chat about things, come to have some mashwara, fil amr, consult them in the matter, having a consultation, and then making a decision. And this is true likewise of a husband with his wife. Yes, the husband is the head of the household in Islam, we know that. And he has the final decision to make. But the Prophet wasallam used to consult his wives and ask them, what do you think about this? He consulted his wives in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and one of his wives radiallahu anha suggested that he sacrifice his animal and shave his head first in order that the people would follow him. So he sought her advice and she gave him the advice. And he took the advice. And this leads me to my final point. And that is regardless of what the age your children are, 
regardless of whatever age your children are at, if they give you good advice, don't be so full of pride that you don't take it. Pride is the methodology of Iblis. Pride is the way of Iblis. I'm too proud to take the advice. I'm too proud to listen. Don't be like that. If your little boy or little girl comes to you and tells you something beneficial, gives you good advice, even if they're three years old or four years old, mommy, daddy, you shouldn't do that. That's haram. See, you don't know what you're talking about. Why are you giving me this? Why are you saying this to me? Go to your bedroom. Or better than that, you say to them, Jazakallahu khairan, wallah, you're right. Inshallah, I have to learn about this and make sure I don't do it again. So we're building upon what we spoke about before, about admitting when you make a mistake. But this is more on the vein of just taking their advice. And as they get older, they will give you wonderful advice if you listen to them. But if your ears are closed and your hands are in them, then you won't ever hear that advice from your children. They give you excellent advice. And they're from the most sincere of people towards you, the most genuine of people towards you. But again, this is not something you can, and I have this as a theme of these lectures, it's not something that you can develop when they're 15, 16. You need to start it from when they're very, very little. They don't fully appreciate amana, they don't fully appreciate responsibility, they don't know what you're being asked to say, but at least you consult them in the minor thing. Should we buy chocolate or ice cream? It's a, it's a little thing. But they will learn that you value their opinion, that it matters to you what they think. And they will respond to that with a sort of reciprocal action in the sense that they will also trust in you, confide in you, and seek your advice. How many people, when their children are teenagers, say, I wish they would take my advice. I wish they would listen to me. They're doing something, they're ruining their life, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're not listening to me. And we say, well, in the earlier part of their life, did you value their contribution to you? Did you value their advice to you? Sometimes as parents, we don't value their advice to us. And therefore, when we give advice to them, they are just behaving to us the same way we behave with them. They also don't value our advice to them. So particularly a lot of these problems become a lot worse when people are teenagers, they become a lot worse when people get older. And the way to deal with them is to try when they're younger. Someone may say, okay, but my child is 15, and I, you know, I haven't consulted them, I haven't made them feel part of the family, I haven't made them feel like their opinion is valued. What do I do now? They don't listen to me. It's never too late to start. It's never too late for you to sit down and admit your mistakes, remember the previous episode, sit down and say it was my fault, I should have consulted you, I should have taken you seriously, you're an adult now, or you're getting near to being an adult, and I do value your opinion, I do take it really, it's really important to me, and I wanna you know, start these, for example, family meetings, or I wanna ask your advice on this. You, know, you can ask your children's advice on things that are less significant, and then build up to things that are more significant. But I want to go back over these points. First of all, you take your children seriously. Don't take your children to be little babies all their life. As they're getting older, you know, your 15-year-old child comes to you and says, look, I want to get married, I'm struggling with women or whatever. And say you're 15, you're not going to get married to anyone until you're 25, be quiet. The thing is that, yes, it may be an inappropriate question, and it may be an inappropriate age, but you need to take these children seriously. Don't fob them off, don't send them outside. Okay, let's talk about it. Why do you feel like that? And then explain to them that marriage is a big commitment, etc., etc. But take them seriously. Give them responsibility. Make them feel like they're an important part of the family, that you trust them. And that's important when you add to what we said about being truthful. As long as your child is showing they're being truthful, show them that you trust them. We had an incident in the house. Someone was eating the cookies. You know how it is. Someone was eating the cookies, and it wasn't me who was eating the cookies, I can swear to that. But my eldest son also swore to me that he didn't eat the cookies. Now, the cookies were on a height such that there was only three people in the household could have realistically eaten those cookies, myself, my wife, or my son. But at the end of the day, he came to me and he said to me, I didn't eat the cookies. And I know I didn't eat them, and my wife says she didn't eat them. So my wife was kind of tempted to pull him up on that 
and say to him that he wasn't telling the truth. And I just said to him, look, if you're telling me the truth and you're serious about this, you know you've been truthful with me in the past, you don't lie to me, and that's what you're saying, then I trust you. But if you've told something wrong and you made a mistake and maybe you forgot about it and you did eat them, just tell me about it and there won't be anything wrong with it. So it's about trusting them as well and being honest with them and giving them a bit of responsibility. So these are points that are all related to do with taking them seriously, giving them responsibility. And that's all we have time for in this episode. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, <laughs>